Hello, in this episode we are continuing our UV unwrapping course by making a medieval house. You don't have to watch the previous versions if you want to make a medieval house. There's enough information in this tutorial for you to complete the model. But if you want to follow the course on UV unwrapping and you're fairly new to it, then you may want to look at the previous episodes. I'll post links in the description and all these exercises will be on gabbit.co.uk where you can go right from beginner to advanced level and all the courses are free. Also, if you have any questions, then you can get across to the Discord server and chat to me there. You can also post your finished models and get some feedback. Okay, so this is my startup scene and I'm going to model some basic shapes that I'm going to use as building blocks to build my house. I'm going to do this in a time-lapse sequence and you should be able to see that all the models are very basic. I'm just using planes and cubes and occasionally I'm rotating a few vertices just to add an element of distortion to the shapes so they look more real and warped. So here I have the basic building blocks of my house. So here's the finished textures. We've got a wall, different size beams, rooftop, window and door. And this is what we're heading for. So the next thing you'll need to do is go across to textures.com. And in here, you can type in door, for example, an old, and there's a thousand old doors. And you can pick one that you think will suit your house. When thinking about these textures, don't worry too much about all the things that are around the door because we can just use this area in here, for example. I think this is a great image, so I'm going to use this one. With textures.com, you get 15 free credits a day, so you should have enough to get all your materials you need. So with that, let's go back to Blender, and here's my door model. It's just a plane, and it's going to be surrounded by wooden beams, so that we won't be able to see any of the edges. Now what is important is that when I was building all these models, I sometimes scaled them whilst I wasn't in edit mode, so I scaled them in object mode. Now if I press N on my keyboard, I can get this panel up here, and you can see that the scale is not at one. That means when I unwrap it, it will cause some slight issues. Therefore, we need to set the scale on each of our objects. That's easy to do. In object mode, we can press Control A and apply or set the scale. You can actually apply the rotation and scale just in case your rotation is out. All mine are at zero, so I won't have a problem. But if you have rotated any objects, you'll want to set that or apply that as well. So Control A and set the scale and rotation. And I'm just going around, doing it to each of my objects. So let's go back to our door, and you'll see my object origin isn't in the center. That won't make too much difference, but you do have to understand that that's your rotation point and your scale point. So if I rotate this in the Y axis, it will move around that point. So let's unwrap it. I'm going to get rid of the timeline at the bottom so I can right click when my cursor changes there and say join area. And then it will ask me which one I want to join. I'm going to go that way. And then I'm going to pull out two windows. One will be the node editor and one will be the UV image editor. And I'll get rid of this side panel as well. And the same for here. And I do that by pressing N. I need to make sure I'm in cycles for this and I'm all ready to unwrap my object. So if I go into edit mode and go to faces and select all, press U to unwrap and press unwrap, and there it is. Let's create a material for this. So I press new, there's my material. If you've got anything different down here, you can just close down whatever you have and press new again. I'm not going to worry too much about shaders at the moment. I'm just gonna add a texture in. So I'll find the texture I just downloaded. And what's nice is you can get your window up and just drag it straight in. I'll close that down, hook it up, and we won't see anything yet because we're not in textured mode. So let's change this to texture and then see what we've got. If I zoom in by pressing full stop on the numpad, I can see that this has gone slightly wrong. If I press these little double arrows here, any textures that I've loaded in will be there. So there's my door, zoom out so we can see that. And we can see it's sideways on for one and it's only covering half the door. So we need to rotate this and scale it so it covers the actual door. So if I press are then 90, that will rotate 90 degrees. I'll scale it down, and you can see my texture moving over here. S to scale, G to grab, and let's move it into position. And I can scale in the X axis by S then X. You can also go into the individual pieces and grab G in the Y axis and pull it down and get them nice and precise. And there we have a simple door. And we'll be able to put that on the front of our house. So the window, the plaster, and the roof will all be a similar scenario to this. What's going to be slightly different are these beams. So I'm going to go back to textures.com and type in wooden beam. 
Now if you want to go nice and realistic, then I would suggest choosing an end as well as a beam material so you can select an area in here as your beam. Remember when choosing textures, the higher the resolution the better, but it will increase your render times very slightly. I've changed my search term to wood beams and I think there's a few more options then. I quite like this one. I think it's got some really nice looking beams in there. So I'll download that. So back into Blender. So I'm going to click on my beam and create a new material. I call it beam and drag my texture in. And let's hook that up. Now we won't see anything yet because we haven't unwrapped it, but let's take a look at our texture and think about how we're gonna unwrap. So I'm going to need long thin pieces to go along the beams. So let's press full stop on the numpad to zoom in into edit mode. And what I'm going to need then is cuts down one side here. And I want each sort of side three faces like this to be attached together so I can put them along here. So I'll split up the ends. And in order to split them up, I'm going to need to mark seams. So if I go into here and press Control E to mark these four as a seam, you'll see they've turned red and that will become an island to itself. So in edge mode, if I Alt right click these and press Control E, mark seam, I'll have a split down here. I'll do that with the other edges. So that one, Alt right click, Shift Alt right click and Shift Alt right click that one down there. Control E, mark seams. And then lastly, these four at the end here, Control E, mark seams. I'll select all, U to unwrap. They're all ready to be positioned on my material. Now for this, I'll find it slightly easier if I use the island selection. So if I select that and then right click on one of these islands, I can then grab it and move it into place. Let's scale that down just a touch. If I press Shift Spacebar, I'll be able to maximize that one screen and then I can make sure it's in a good position, which it is. Right click on the next one, scale it down and move it to a different position for some variety. Generally speaking, you'll want to keep them roughly the same size, but a tiny bit of variation won't matter too much. So all this time I'm pressing S to scale, right clicking to select, G to grab and moving these pieces into position. If you have to for any reason, you can also rotate with R and usually you'll be rotating 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Now these pieces will be a bit different and I can actually use these areas at the end here if I scale that down so it fits one of these end pieces. And there we go. Shift spacebar to go back into normal mode and we can see my plank. I'll just deselect everything so we can see it a bit easier and it's looking all right. So now you should be able to do the same for each of your objects and you'll be able to position them and you'll be able to duplicate them with Shift D and position them so that they make up a beautiful house. I'll show you a time lapse of my process so you can see how I went about it. For each of these beams, you can use the same material. So the beam material I can use, and then I just have to reposition those into different spaces of my beam material. Now you might think, why haven't you just copied and pasted this one and shrunk it down? Well, one, it's good to have variation and two, all the materials will shrink down as well. So you'll have beams that look identical, but shrunk, and that's not quite realistic. You may not need to do as many as I've done here, and you can edit the geometry slightly and not distort the texture too much. So if this one, for example, isn't the right size, I can easily scale it in the Y. It will stretch my materials slightly, which I'll show you here. If I grab the end face and pull it out, you can see it's stretching that material and you have to watch out for that. It doesn't look too bad in this case, but you do have to be aware of that as it can detract from the final look of your model. Now it's worth pointing out for the plaster material, which is actually loam, I'm using a seamless texture from textures.com. That way when I bring it in, and hook it up. Let's just check what it's looking like. If I at all need to, and I think this is a bit big, I can press Control T with the Node Wrangler installed. Otherwise you'll need to find the mapping node and the texture coordinate node and hook them up. But Control T over this texture will give you those automatically with the Node Wrangler installed. So File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and just type in Node Wrangler and make sure it's ticked and then save your user settings. Now I can easily scale it up and press something like 2 and then just make sure you're on material mode and that will show you 
what it's actually going to look like. Texture mode will only show you the texture. Material will show you the node material that you've got. And there you can see that's seamless, so it's tiled really nicely. And now it's a case of just building my house. And you can see in occasions like this, I just need to scale it really slightly. So scale in the Y, and I can just scale it down and make it fit in to these different areas. And it shouldn't matter too much to the materials as they're only stretching very slightly. The other thing you might want to do every now and again is just rotate your objects so that they show a different side of the wood and they don't look so uniform. Now you can see for this object that the texture has become distorted, so what I need to do is bring back my UV image editor and node editor with shift spacebar and just re-unwrap it. So if I select it in edit mode, select the face or select all with A, unwrap and re-unwrap. Now I can put some piece of wood in here and it will look just fine. So don't be afraid to re-unwrap if you need to. So there we have it, a basic medieval house. I would encourage you, if you are able, to take this even further and maybe think about some levels, perhaps putting a brick base or a stone base to this. Find some reference images, find some unusual, interesting shapes and take it to the next level. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.